From time to time, Dr. Kwaku Ramel Smith has given us great advice on practicing better mental wellness. He's doing that now weekly on WNLV 860 AM, 106.5 FM, discussing mental health and ways to manage our stress levels better. Every Wednesday from 11 to noon, the show provides tips on reducing stress, clearing our minds of negative thoughts, and making better sense of the world. Dr. Smith joins us now. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to be on Black Nouveau. What's the name of the show and how did the show come about? Uh, the name of the show is called Nayumbu Upendo, and that translates from Key Swahili to House of Love. And what we thought that the show, the, the community needed was just some love, some place where we could get information specifically on mental health, but not how usually mental health looks. It's not always about anxiety, depression, and trauma, but it's also those proactive strategies and those other things in life that create stress that raises our mental, uh, our illness and things of that nature. But we say, what can we do to give people the love that they need to just give them that emotional equilibrium that we're missing? How's the response been so far? Well, so far, so good. It's still new, and it's like I have so much respect for people who do hosting shows because it's a different animal when you're then the interviewer from the interviewee. So, but no, right now it's going really good. What we're just hoping to do is to be able to bring in audiences from a national level and a local level to be able to give, like I said again, those tidbits of information that's going to help people in a way in which they never thought about with mental illness and mental wellness. So I saw this statistic that really troubled me. It said that blacks represent 13.4% of the U.S. population, and last year, 16% of us reported having a mental illness in the past year. That would be around 7 million people or the, uh, or the entire population of Chicago, Houston, and Philadelphia combined. Why are so many uh, African Americans suffering from mental health issues? Think of James Baldwin. He said to be black and relatively conscious in America is to be in a rage of all the time. When we look at the level of stress that we go through on a regular day, I'm talking about historical stress, historical trauma, current trauma, just the daily life of what's bills going on, but then the anticipatory trauma, like am I next, am, is my son next, is my mother next, like what's gonna happen to me that I know is not just a part of regular life. So when you put all of those things together, I would say that number is really over, overly low, because I would say that 100% of us deal with some type of issues when we talk about complex trauma. When you do your show, what, what kind of calls are you getting? What, what kind of advice are you giving? Well, one of the things what we try to do is we try to talk about mental health in a way that's not mental health, because we know mental health is so taboo. So what we try to do is talk about, hey, how do we go about knowing that laughter is good for the soul? So we'll have a comedian on the show. We'll have a person on, Nurse Marty on, talking about water, but what do we need to bring into our body? But then we'll also talk about, you know what? How do we do the art of forgiveness? How do we learn to forgive, understanding how that lowers our blood pressure, how that decreases our stress, how that gives us a greater output on life? Because a lot of times we're looking for these definitions from a DSM code, that's the Diagnostic Statistical Manual that psychiatrists Use, but what we say is, what's common sense? What's hurting? How do we get better? The topic of racism plays into mental health. That's why I said 100% of us have it. How, how do you address racism and how do we deal with that as a form of mental health and mental wellness? Well, it's a great point that you put because uh, back in 2020, uh, the APA, that's the American Psychological Association, did a great apology to black people and all BIPOC people because they said, not only did we not help other people when it deals with racism. We were complicit in it. So think the very organization that's supposed to help you with your mental health was complicit in a lot of the things that was racist. So when we see disport disproportionate numbers in suspensions and detentions in school, it's the same thing when we talk about diagnosis and then psychotropic diagnosis with the people. So they look and see how it can be. So racism is embedded within our society. So we have to look in and see how we as black people complicit in our own oppression. And then we have to look at what are those ways in which we don't look at ourselves as victims, but we look at the resilience factor, the perseverance factor that we see in our ancestors that got us from 16, 19, all the way to 2023. 20, and then you embold yourself by saying, what can I do for our posterity? So in 21, 23, they're looking at something better than what we have. So we deal with this quite a bit with the stigma and finding a, uh, someone to talk to who looks like you, yeah. and looks like me. We, it's hard to find those type of uh, people out there. What are we supposed to do? 
Well, and I'm glad you said that because one of the things we're trying to do with the show too is we're bringing that. We have a lot of black clinicians of color inside of the city, many that people don't know of, some that they do know of, and letting them know. But also what we're trying to do is generate enthusiasm and excitement. The show based on the Mary Ellen Strong Foundation, which was a way to get new social workers and clinicians in the city of Milwaukee through a fellowship and scholarship through UW-Milwaukee. The same people who did that scholarship and funding are the same people that's allowing us to have the show. Uh, now you move Pendo on WNOV. Well, that's fantastic. Um, last question for you. This is a stressful time of the year, yeah. Christmas time, you know, people going through the holidays. What, what quick tips would you give for people trying to deal with the stress right now? Yeah, this is the first thing. One, uh, bite into that. What I mean by bite into it, understand the pain. Let it go. Sometimes we try to ignore the pain like it does out there. Admit that that pain is there, but then two, what we want to do is remember those beautiful times. We're usually sad because we're losing something. So I say, remember those times that made you happy. And then three, and finally, try to create some more beautiful times, either by yourself or with a collective group, either as a whole of us being together as family or us going sharing our gifts with others who are in need. Fantastic. Well, we will tune into your show. Thanks Thank a lot. You.